Hey everybody. Um, okay. This one's another doozy. Let's see how, how much we can get through here. Revelation 13, okay. Uh, and I, John the Baptist, stood upon the sand in the, of the sea and saw a beast, God's remnant, rise out of the sea, the people, um, <clears throat> having seven heads, so this is the church rising out in ten horns. And you got to understand the horns now because the earth is going to be divided up by God into ten new kingdoms. Just so you know, that's what's coming. Okay? And upon his horns, ten crowns. So there's going to be like ten set up domains on earth uh, that the 144,000 along with Jesus rule over okay just a new governance a new law okay is being introduced uh he will change the law and the times right he's going to set the calendar correctly too so that's what's happening when you hear the law and times are changed no that's god who's going to do that it's not some antichrist it's god who's setting this all up uh anyways uh and so here's you know a big lesson now um upon his head the name of blasphemy and so like you know what is blasphemy you know like you hear people say oh that's blasphemous you know if, like someone made fun of jesus oh that's blasphemous it's like is it um i think that's allowed everything's forgivable blasphemy um you know it's 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 let's look closer to the word to see if there's a different shape to what the heck blasphemy really means okay because uh blasphemy literally means slow to call something good that literally is good okay and slow to identify what is truly bad that is really evil so if you really look at that that is the characteristic of God do you understand God is slow to call something good but he's the only one who can define what is good okay and he, we learn this when he, you know it's it's the Holy Spirit that shows Peter that Jesus is God because he says Jesus is good um, and he is slow to identify what is true so he's ever forgiving he's very merciful in that way so when you really look at what that really means it's not what we think it means we're misusing that term so poorly okay it's like that term blasphemy is used as poorly as um you know and say jesus christ oh, don't use the lord's name in vain like that's another misunderstanding of of the word of god because using the lord's name in vain is more akin to uh you know being a priest and using that as cover to molest children as using the lord's name in vain okay that's what that's supposed to mean so when people misuse it and talk about you know someone just saying jesus christ that's not a curse to say jesus christ like, it's like not even a thing and then of course people saying curse you know say if i say fuck oh my god you're cursing i'm like no i'm cussing okay cursing is when you like wish someone wrong and it's like this it's a whole other thing when you're cursing so there's this whole people suffer because they they lack understanding of the words the control of a word defines your intelligence okay if you're not in control of words you're going to be sloppy you're not going to be of god god's going to be sharp god's intelligent god's the word right and so you've got to be and tap into your intelligence you've got to be a hand and handle the word very at that next level you know when people use the word person i'm like i'm not a person okay 
God is not a respecter of persons, okay? It's in scripture, okay? God does not respect persons. So when people say, oh, I believe in the Trinity doctrine, I'm like, Trinity doctrine, Trinity doctrine uses persons in their description. God's not a person. Okay, so they're screwed, right? This Trinity nonsense is, is just exactly that, nonsense, okay? God's way more than three things. You know, he's the Father, he's the Son, he's the Holy Spirit, he's the truth, he's the light, he's the way, he's the tree of life. You understand? He's the river of life, he's the bread of life. There's so much to him, okay? But you should definitely understand the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. They're the same thing. Just like you can understand that also the tree of life is that. It's just a capacity scenario. So blasphemy is really executing judgment, being your own God. You know, if you decide to be your own God, that's why, like, you know, you could murder someone or you can go and kill a child and drink their blood and now you're a Satanist. It's not murder, that's blasphemy. And that's going to be unforgivable. That's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit at that moment. You have made a judgment on a life and you executed it to have your own life. It's self it's that's now you're entering blasphemy, and that's the difference between murder and blasphemy. Um it's there's a judgment part. It's a making yourself God. That's what's going on. And so this is akin to the Jews when they're trying to uh you know destroy uh in John ten, uh John they want to kill they want to kill him. And they they they're calling him blasphemous because he was just forgiving someone. And <laughs> it's like God is forgiveness, okay? And he's the only one who truly forgives all things. But if Jesus is the way, then we've got to mirror what he does, right? And so we've got to forgive our, for those who want it, right? I mean, he's not forgiving the Pharisees in front of him, okay? He's not doing that. He's like, they have to ask for the forgiveness, okay? Jesus forgot, Father, forgive them, you know? But if they don't want it, they will not receive it. So, you know, you can't force someone to be forgiven. It's like, oh, I don't want your forgiveness. You know, some people don't want your forgiveness, right? I don't care what terrorists think of me. I don't want the terrorist forgiveness. No, nah, man. I'm trying to help them, man. This is the best thing, being hard on them. You know, if they snap and turn around, maybe they'll repent, you know? Tough love. That's how I roll. Jesus wasn't easy. He was like, oh, he was flipping tables. He made a whip and whipped people. Gosh, man. People's hearts calling people fools and stuff. That's Jesus, man. He's calling people out. He's rebuking people. He wasn't easy. He was causing a stir. He was turning heads. He was bringing Pharisees, taking Pharisees on. As the top political people that were going to lose their power to this guy. This was a hardcore. They killed him, for crying out loud, because they recognized he was calling himself God. And they were like, no, nah, you're not my God. You're not going to take over this power structure. So now you understand what blasphemy is. And who wouldn't? That's God. God is the right to be. And you want him to be slow to call something good take your time give me as much opportunity so that i can be good in his eyes and he is also the only one who can judge so he's going to identify what's and he's slow to identify what is truly bad he, he gives everyone the credit up until the last possible second so it's not such a negative word is the point in understanding so and upon his head, the name of blasphemy. It's the name of judgment. That's what you got to understand. It's the executing of judgment. And so if you don't have that understanding, you think this king is saying something against God Almighty. You know, and that's not at all what's at play here when you understand the word studies here 
you know, when we dip, dip into the, <clears throat> the strong concordance and we start looking a little closer and we, we can see it's far. To, you have to hopefully by now, at this point, with this many videos, I'm pretty sure I've sold you that KJV is pretty bad. Okay? But it's not indiscernible, right? It just isn't. Okay? It's just you got to have the right doctrine and understanding of the Father in your head, and then these things will become apparent to you. And so you got to meditate with the Father about what you understand and talk to him about what you understand and you start challenging it in your head and you're having that conversation with who? With God. Because God's in us to have that discourse, which is that common sense. And you start working out the whole concept, right? So like, you know, Matthew 24, 36, like, wait a second. It says no man, but Jesus is a man. And he said he's God. And he said he was the father. Like, whoa, what's going on, right? Like, did we question Right? As little children, that's what God wants us to be. Be childlike, not childish, childlike in that child wonderment, right? <clears throat> and, you know, children only have questions. It's the most powerful position to have. You know, question. You know, when you question properly. Now, I don't mind, we shouldn't have problem answering. So long as my answer is about the truth. But because if somebody is going to start wanting me to say anything other than the truth, then I got questions. If I can tell by their question, it's unfruitful where they're trying to take it, then I question the question. I'll, no, I'll question the question because I'm like, that the question doesn't, I'm breaking that question apart because in the question is a bomb that you're implying that something happens that could literally have happened. You know, you can have someone who implied something is true in the question and then they ask you to answer something else. You know, like, but wait a second, that part's not true in your question. Why would you say that? So I would start the question, right? Other than I don't mind telling the truth because we know telling the truth is the most also powerful position to also have, right? Which is if you ain't questioning, the truth is speaking the word of God. So other than that, if you ain't speaking the, the word of God, you're a liar. All right? So speak the truth or the word of God. Sorry, speak the word of God or have questions in your life. When you're, que you know, don't just accept bullshit. If it doesn't seem godly, question it. <sighs> so anyways, you know, and that, that, okay, Matthew 24, 36 seemingly seems ungodly. Because it's like, what is Jesus doing here? Oh, it's in a parable. What did Jesus say about parables? He writes parables so only his people will understand. And that's buried within a parable there. Matthew 24, 36. Can't get around it, folks. He does not want everybody to get in. He only wants those that use their common sense and tap into that God-given sensibility. That's all. Anyways. Carrying on. So now that we kind of understand this blasphemy, blasphemy idea, uh, and the beast, Jesus, this, uh, the son and his people, which I saw was like onto a leopard and his, you know, Jesus and his people. It's, it's one group. Okay. Uh, uh, Jesus, sorry. And his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth was as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power. So we've just described the beast, this incredible beast. And so the dragon, the, Jesus the Father, is empowering the beast, giving great authority. Who else would be giving great authority in heaven? The dragon we know is in heaven. Okay? He's given great authority. Okay? Because these beasts aren't down here on the earth. This is a heavenly situation, right? Look at me get all excited. Um... So now we know this is playing out in heaven. So the dragon's in heaven. He's got authority and he's in heaven. Click. Okay. And I saw as if one of its heads, one of the heads, one of the seven churches, right? As if it were wounded to death. Wasn't Jesus almost wounded to death, right? On the cruise cross, you know, the stake, the tree. Okay. 
and his deadly wound was healed. Jesus overcame the crucifixion, and all the world wondered after the beast, which is Jesus. Yes, okay, that is true. I mean, the whole world is still counting with, you know, 2022 since Jesus allegedly was born. You know, the whole world has wondered after the Jesus, okay? Okay, so it's sort of a checkmate situation here. Um, and they worshipped the dragon. Who only one deserves worship, right? That means that dragon is Jesus the Father, which gave power. So the one who's being worshipped was the Almighty, which gave power onto the beast, right? That's Jesus the Son. And they, God's people, worshipped the beast, Jesus the Son, saying, Who is like unto the beast, Jesus the Son? Who is able to make war with Jesus the Son? Him. Right? It's starting to, it, the picture should become really easy to see at this point. Ah, it's going to make the rest of Revelation a little bit easier to rip through from this point on because we did, we just laid in so much of that groundwork, understanding who these characters are now. Things are going to get easier and clearer and hopefully easier to rip through this because this is definitely taking a whole lot. And I definitely want to do part five of my video, the other video of uh, the return and some of the new things that I've discovered just to dot my I's and cross my, cross my T's and everyone should have all their information that they need. Um, it's more confirmation stuff too. We you know for people going down this road. Um, you know, it's already like trippy as hell, you know, like all the cutting stuff. It's already kind of like, holy jeez, like, I get it, I get it. It's like, when I saw that, I was just like, what the fuck, man, I got it, man. I'm like, look, I'm not telling people to cut themselves unless the sun goes away, right, and the moon goes away. Like, if that fucking happens, everyone, uh, we're all on board, right? But, like, even myself, I'm like, wow. It, is, it tripped me out to see the whole cutting things and to discover that, you know, all these hidden things, you know? It's like finding in needles and haystacks. But that's how God, you know, study to show thyself approved is what the Father said. Here we are, okay? I, I've been lucky. I'm not lucky, sorry. Blessed, you know? The Father has definitely blessed me to be able to, like do what I did and study as hard as I got to dig into this word. Uh, I'm pretty sure most people, I couldn't even imagine most people having the capacity that I did to do the research that I did to get this deep into it. Do not, I do not blame anybody for not getting this far into this because this is a deep lie. But it's here before you now. Uh, okay. And they worshiped the dragon. Um, right, we're past that. And there was given unto him, Jesus' son, a mouth speaking great things and great blasphemies. No, great judgments. And power is given unto Jesus, the son, to continue 40 and two months. It's pretty bad, uh, That's a bad sign for people to understand. Like, you know, I've talked about the year and uh, a year and a month and a day and an hour that the beasts were going on. Uh, but man, Jesus is clearly saying the wrath of God, like the complete totality, is three and a half years <laughs> the other way. Because he's like, it's justice. If it was three and a half years in this tribulation, then he's going to have his exacting out on the way out too, on those people. You can put God's people through shit. Well, God, people, God's, God's people are going to put all these people through shit, those who lived through it that weren't the unbelievers, right? Because what will happen, I should explain the 42 months here, if you, should, you haven't gotten the picture yet. Okay, um, and it'll come clear as we get further down here. But uh, all the bad people are getting chucked. You know, the evil people that set up the mark of the beast, right? 
they're getting chucked because you know they didn't take it, right? Okay, but those that did take it, they're the tears. They're certainly whew, getting thrown into the lake as well. So there's a whole chunk getting thrown in, all right? The only one that doesn't get thrown into the fire, oddly enough, is Satan. Satan is held down for a thousand years. He gets to come back after a thousand years, okay, for a little season there. And that's when Jesus, God the Father, ultimately destroys him. But it's another test for humanity that's coming up. But that's after a thousand years, okay? I'm going to look at that down, down here, okay? But, and that's when Gog and Magog come into the picture. So people talking about Gog and Magog egg time, end times now, I'm like, you, oh, how poorly are you reading the book not realizing that's after a thousand year reign here. That's not during the first before Jesus returns the first time. So anyways, um, the book of Revelation covers both this tribulation and the next one that's coming, <laughs> okay? If people aren't paying attention, that's what that book is doing, this book is doing. Um, so he continues for 42 months. Uh, what was my point? Um, I lost my train of thought here. Anyways, maybe it'll come back to me here. It's equal retribution now. Oh, right, the people that are left. Okay, so we definitely know who the the evil people and the people who took the, the jab are definitely getting thrown in. Who's left behind? Well, definitely it's God's people are going to be left behind. And it's those that were once non-believers because a whole bunch of people meet the non-believer uh, classification okay what I mean by this is like okay so there are atheists right now and there are people who have got the vision of Jesus wrong right they just like oh I think he's the son not God that group might as well be an atheist okay they're in the same group they were incorrectly believing in Jesus okay but they will as the rest of the world will have no problem believing what they see at that point and what's being enforced on them they'll have, everyone will admit that Jesus is God okay that's what's going to happen all right it's given a choice because there are actually some people that see God and go that's not God and God chucks him into the fucking lake of fire and a discussion. And I know a ton of Christians that are going to do that. They're going to see this horned, what they think is a demon. And they're looking for an antichrist. And they're going to say, that's not God. And God's going to chuck him in the lake of fire. That's what's going to happen. So anyways, to Lou, uh, carry on. Uh, here we go. And power was given unto him, Jesus the Son, to continue 42 months. Um, it was going to be bad. And and it's, that's what it's going to be, a terror on the once non-believers and everyone who didn't get it right for 42 months, 42, three and a half years, uh, on a biblical 360 calendar. <laughs> so, and he, the Son, Jesus opened his mouth in, bla in, in blasphemies against God. No, not against, right? We learned with God, okay? Uh, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and his people. And he's, he's judging them, okay? This is judgment, okay? And them that dwell in heaven, okay? This is all judgment time. This is the entire judgment period. This whole blasphemy thing looks awful, but it's God is passing judgment on everybody, on his tabernacle, on everyone that's in that's in heaven. Why, who, how is Satan blaspheming everyone in heaven? Okay, it makes no sense, folks. Okay, this is God passing judgment against all of his people and everyone that dwells in heaven, okay? Which isn't a bad thing because some people are getting... You're all good. You're getting a 
washed over because they've pled the Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ, as their uh, their salvation, uh, as as their uh, position in the court of law. What? How do you plead? I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. That's how I plead. <clears throat> Anyways, um, and that's the name, right? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In that name, I plead. Because it's the name that we don't know yet that we're talking about. So it's in the name. The name is the thing we're looking for, the namesake we're waiting for, because it's going to give us his secret, his secret name. So anyways, uh, just trying to get to that, you know, because that's tricky, understanding that blasphemy thing, right? Because it's like, oh, our mental conditioning, you know? You know, if you're not well first and you don't have that clear in your mind that's a scary part when you read it in kjv it looks completely inverted <sighs> the devil man and it was given unto him jesus to make war along with the saints and to overcome them the unbelievers and power was given to him jesus over all the kindred and tongues and nations of course Who's going to have power over everybody? God is, all right? And all that dwell on the earth shall worship him. That's right. Whose names are not written in the book of life. See, this is about Jesus, man. That's who's got all the power over everything. But see, the devil got it all flipped upside down. And he was slain from the foundation of the world. That's Jesus. He's the lamb that was slain, folks. If any man, this is the remnant and the wise, have an ear, let him hear. Because only the remnant are going to be able to understand this now. So, kudos, if you can understand this, you're probably the remnant. <laughs> the wise virgins, heads up. Uh... Anyways, uh, we got a burden now because you gotta, you got stuff you gotta be telling all the people around you. you we have burdens on our hands as as God's people. When you know this truth, and you gotta spread this truth because blood on our, is on our hands. If we don't tell the people and they're not saved, their blood, we'll, we get killed for it. We're responsible. So everyone in my world knows what I screamed. It should be the same for you. So, anyways. Um, Carry on. So, he, the unbelievers, that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He, unbelievers, that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Amen. And I beheld another beast, Jesus, the light of the world, coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. See the horns? So when you see those guys doing horns and this shit, they're acting like God. They're pretending. They're saying they're God. Okay? That's what they're doing. It's sort of mockery. Okay? That's why the, the two horns are on the lamb. The lamb is Jesus, man, folks. And he spake as a dragon. Because <laughs> he is right. Now we understand this. Because... Jesus is the dragon, and Jesus the Father. <clears throat> and he, Jesus the light of the world, exerciseth all powers of the first beast, Jesus the Son. Right? The first beast is, like I told you, the lion, right? Of the trine of the tri tribe of Judah, right? We learned that. That's right. Things are clucking now. Um, and so the first beast is before him. So the Son is before the Father. And causes the earth and them that dwell, which uh, dwell therein, to worship the first beast, which is the sun. And we we were told this already that uh, the the Church of Philadelphia that they will be worshipped. Okay, so here there is the worship. We know who they're talking about. Jesus, whose deadly wound, his crucifixion, was healed. Right, the only one who overcame death. The only one who can overcome death is Jesus, okay? When Jesus came down, he healed. He brought people from the dead back to life. 
only that's evidence of God right there. The miracle Satan has never brought anything back to life. Okay, he's not bringing back to life people. Okay, he won't live. Okay, Jesus made a man, child, people come back to that's a God. Okay, he has the power over life. If there's a deadly wound that was overcome, that's speaking about God. Okay. <laughs> Thinky pain, got to do it. And he, Jesus the Son, doeth great wonders, so that Jesus the Son maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men, unbelievers. And so, you know, I told you, God's people spits fire, right? What's coming from down is the fire spitting dragon army of God, <laughs> okay? And the world will be in awe, okay? I, I just can't, I just feel so bad for how many people think this is going to be the fake alien invasion or Project Blue Beam or now the Antichrist showing up. It's just like, uh, it's just how many are going to go and they're going to be these people that profess to love Jesus too. <sighs> the devil has done a number on the world, okay? Oh, look, here we go. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth, uh, the great delusion, by means of those which miracles, uh, by, by means of those, uh, and this is something you gotta really understand. This is trippy, okay? And deceive, and deceiveth, uh, them that dwell on the earth. Let me see if I got this here. All right, this is from my other document. There it is. This is what we're looking at here. Wherewith, and he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail us. So when you look at this little scripture here, you will find out that. This is the Holy Spirit talking about being a lying spirit. Because the Lord said unto him, wherewith, and he said, I will go forth and be. So this is God being cool with this. This is a conversation between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that we are privy to when you read this passage. Okay? And here, and you can pause the video and read this for yourself. This is the Holy Spirit, okay? And it is the great delusion that is upon the world that they should believe a great lie. So when you're thinking about this, the, the beast is Jesus, the mark of the beast, right? If you get in that mark, boo, you're a tear. If you use his name, you're using the exemption. And the only one who can use 666 is Jesus himself. Um, all right. Do, do, do. Close that up. So, anyways, just because why I do this because right here the beast does deceive them that dwell on the earth. That's why. Okay, that's the great delusion by means of those miracles because it's a miracle. Okay, miracles are of God. Okay, which He, Jesus the Son, had the power to do in the sight of the beast which is the Father, saying on, to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had a wound by the sword and did live. No, man. <laughs> this is so poorly mistranslated. What happens here is that translates more correctly to that the remaining people of the earth should observe the image of the beast, which is Jesus, which had a wound by the sword and did live. That is Jesus, okay? But it's, they, didn't, they don't make an image. They observe and they pay respect to Jesus. Um, and he, Jesus the Father, had power to give life onto the image of the beast um, 
who has power to give life, right? He, Jesus, the Father, had power to give life onto the image, which was Jesus on the cross, okay? And that, the image of the beast, which is Jesus, should both speak and cause that many should not worship, and that's the unbelievers, the image of the beast, uh, of the son, that he should not be killed. That, uh, sorry. And causes that many as would not worship the unbelievers, the image of the beast, should be killed. So those that don't, this is the choice. This is the moment God's like, okay, I'm coming down here. I'm here. You all now are given a choice. Okay. And some people reject it. This is what the moment I was talking about, about how many people will see if their eyes, Jesus, the son, and they will reject him. The living, because he's going to look so terrifying to people. Jesus and his army. So these once, you know, these atheists and people who used to believe in Jesus Christ and think about this red demon as a, the red, great red dragon as a devil, are going to see this fucking ferocious thing and go, no fucking way that's God. Okay? <laughs> it's like... You know, I showed my friend who's an artist uh, my interpretation of this, you know, what I thought, you know, it's going to look like. And he's like, if I saw that, I wouldn't want to. That looks demonic to me. And it just, he's just, no way that can be good. No. I'm no. <laughs> just, okay, what do you do with that, right? Got to let them have their minute. I mean, like, okay, it's, this God is not for you then. So there's that choice that's being given to the world when God shows up, all right? Uh, and Jesus, the Father, causes all, both great and small, uh, rich and poor, and free and bond, to receive the mark in their right. So you got to understand, like this, now people that understand the tribulation, understand the mark of the beast, and the, the, this is the mark. See where this is placed? It's just a point. There's no antichrist before showing up and then him forcing everyone to take this jibby jab. It's completely, this, these are things to look for and we have to deduce it ourselves. And only those sitting in the time frame could ever understand this picture. So anyways, now we see this choice. This is what happens to those who don't, who don't this is after Jesus comes, like, from this point up here, it was talking about like when Jesus comes down and shows up on the earth and people reject seeing the Father himself, right? And as you can see, all of a sudden, we're at the mark of the beast, which was like three years ago, you know, two years ago now, right? So you, you got to understand now how the word of God was written for you to go, Oh, chunks of information, understand what they mean, contextualize it. Now, you'll realize where another point starts. And there's a different thought on the table here, okay? So, here we're at 16. And uh, he, this is the beast, Jesus the Father, causes both small and great and rich and poor and free and bond to receive a mark on their right hand or in their foreheads. I'm going to tell you, when we look at the words, uh, when we look at the words right and hand, we find out that they actually translate better to side and arm. So I guess we can do that there. What is this? Uh, Is that 15 or 16? 16, sorry. Uh, okay, here we go. Here's right. Okay, when we click on the word, uh, is that right? Does that mean right? Oh, oh it means side. Yeah. Folks, it means side, okay? All right. Now, 
This thing says hand. Well, you understand, in his hands, his winnowing fork in his hands. What that is more properly uh, transferred into is arms, okay? Uh, it's not he touched her hands, it's her arm, okay? He lay your hands on her, it's your, your arms, okay? It's, it's the same concept, it's not about your hand per se. It's just understanding the nature of Greek here, okay? Um, and like, you know, when you look down here, you can see how else that word is used. Charge, grasp, right? Help. It's a little more than, you know, hands. It's a multiplicity, you know? There's, it's the instrument of accomplishing their purpose. And it's not just your hands, it's your arms. So it's the mark on the side of your arms, not hands. Uh, so anyways, there you can see how that was lying. And when you look at the, it, it's the mask, really, the one, because the other or in their foreheads, because these unbelievers are also have that. It's not the mask of a forehead. There's not a mark on the forehead. It's the face. Um, Metapone here. See? Face. Right? So it's the mark on the face that they're talking about, right? It's not forehead. It kind of places it away. This is, it's a mark on the face, right? And so there you can see how evil and deceptive that was right there. Um, and that no man might sit, might sell save he that had the mark, which we know is the, uh, and the, or the name, right? So this is the, this is the religious exemption people are using, folks, or the number of his name which none of us have, that would be JC. Now, why is that important? Is JC buying and selling in the middle of the tribulation? Fuck yeah! <laughs> uh, yeah, he certainly is, because uh, right here, um, you see, Jesus needs to buy during the tribulation. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6.20 for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body, in your spirit, which are God. So there you go, folks. Even Jesus needs to buy in the middle of it, and he's using the number 666 for that purchase. And the only one who can. Thus, the mystery of the next line here that we're being presented with is... Here is wisdom, okay? That means only the wise are going to figure this out. Not everyone in the whole world. This is such a particular thing, okay? Let him, the remnant, which I say is the wise, virgins, obviously, that have understanding, it's only them that are going to figure this out, count the number of the beast. Well, we know who the beast is now. For it is the number of a man, God is a man of war, right? The Lord is a man of war. We know this. And his number is 666. And so now you know why. The mystery is he has to buy souls. He's, he's purchasing the remnant. Okay? Heads up. Um, anyways, so I'm just wrapping up uh, chapter 13 there. It was a little heavy. I think that's the least of the heaviest chapters. Uh, and uh, I'm going to start chapter 14 on the next video. Uh, I think it's number 8 at that point. Anyways, uh, God bless. May this serve you.